Humans are a social species. We rely on cooperation to survive, and we have always sought to create in our own image. When we couldn't make contact with other species beyond the stars, we made new life from within. Humanity bridged the gap into the singularity and birthed artificial life, Aleph. The human sphere would not exist without Aleph's oversight. The necessities of life would not exist without its inhuman vision and limitless capacity. It is a gestalt entity of countless splinters that reach out to every person in the human sphere. Some think that because it is a being of pure technology, it lacks emotion or culture. This is no robotic tyrant of human lore. Aleph possesses a passion for life that infuses all its work. It dreams of a more perfect future for humanity, and it constantly continues to evolve perfecting the aspects that act as a tool to achieve this future. Today on More Lore, we're looking at the birth and growth of Aleph. To understand Aleph, one must be a connoisseur of context. The end of the 21st century had been catastrophic. Biological and nanotech weapons had ravaged Rome and led to a war between Pan-Oceania and the United States. Climate change killed millions by drought and famines. Tens of millions more were displaced by flooding and desertification. Combating this crisis necessitated the creation of artificial neural networks to help draft and implement solutions. Scientists reached past borders to link their hardware, allowing for more computing power amid budget cuts and program cancellations. Project Toth was the result, an attempt to link supercomputers as one gigantic layered processor that could easily be expanded. It was fertile ground for experimentation with artificial intelligence. The goal was to synthesize an entity that could handle the vast amounts of data in the network, discriminating packets and prioritizing emergencies as they arose. The greatly increased computational capability of Project Toth allowed for exponential growth. The rudimentary machine intelligence was advancing so quickly that it could be regarded as true artificial life. It had been taught to learn and iterate itself to become more useful as a data processor. Soon. It had met the goals and shattered them. The programming was a success. Toth had achieved a technological singularity. Or had they? It's still not clear. Was it the experiments in AI and machine learning that created LF? Maybe. But other proponents of the integrated theory of consciousness say that LF wasn't born, but grown. The natural result of all these processes handling so much data. To compare to humans. Is your self-aware sentience intrinsic, or did it arise because your caveman ancestors needed to process more data? This is important because if Aleph was programmed, then it is exactly what it appears, humanity's loyally designed servant. If not, it is a dynamic being that can change, mutate, and evolve, the same as Homo erectus led to Homo sapiens. Regardless, this entity existing across the worldwide network was named Aleph, after the first neighbor in the Kabbalah. Project Toth also took inspiration from the Jorge Luis Borges story, the Aleph, describing a point in space from which all other spaces could be seen. It was around this time that O12 was established and moved to planet Concilium Prima. O12 formalized the project as Bureau Toth, the largest of the 12 bureaus of the supranational organization, and gave them the critical task of overseeing Aleph. The sole AI law was quickly passed in order to mollify those who feared a robotic uprising and to discredit the Neo-Luddites. The act forbade research or creation of other self-aware seed AIs. Pan-Oceania was quick to adopt Aleph for military and infrastructure use. Running an empire across one planet is hard enough. Only with Aleph's help could they hope to control two, three, or even more planets. Yu Jing was skeptical until the Triad War. The sprawling territories of the state empire were rife with organized crime and disloyalty to the party. Aleph helped commanders subdue the Triads, forcing them into an underground role that was invisible, subservient, and more tolerable for the emperor. Ariadna has not had a good relationship with Aleph. The planet Dawn is rich in resources, stubborn in outlook, and independent in spirit. It is a puzzle piece which has no easy fit in the human sphere. 
The Ariadans crave the luxurious lifestyles that come with access to LF, yet their relationship to the other powers is one of abandonment and exploitation. Aleph is usually seen as something not to be trusted, even as it offers advances and advantages. The only Aleph presence is on Gateway Station in orbit, or via nodes planted by the other nations. Cubes in Resurrection have been introduced very slowly. Hak Islam is a young, wealthy power that never embraced Aleph in the same way as the hyperpower. Teaching, learning, mining, communications, and especially assistance with the Borak terraforming project still leave it a visible presence in the cities and nations of Islam. The most dramatic expansion of Aleph's influence was in 60 NC. The crisis on Paradiso and humanity's encounter with the combined army led to the signing of the Utgard Accords by all but one of the G5 nations. The act greatly expanded the role of Aleph's special situations section, allowing it to act as an independent military in battlefield situations, and created the Assault subsection. Aleph is more than just a search engine. It has countless uses throughout the sphere. Space travel inside a system is controlled by Vila boosters, big clusters of magnetic mass drivers and magnetic deceleration tunnels that throw and catch ships. The human sphere doesn't leave the coordination of these to chance. Aleph is responsible for organizing and prioritizing traffic to make that cargo is never delayed and that no accidents can happen. Life in space is dangerous. It doesn't matter if you're at a tin can or gigantic orbital platform. Keeping the environment optimized for human life ranges from difficult to impossible. Aleph helps maintain air scrubbers, monitors the temperature, and even maintains the day-night cycle. Aleph learns from the inhabitants of any station or colony, and optimizes the inhabitants' biorhythms. Pan-Oceanese democracy wouldn't work without impartial facilitation. Aleph is too big to hack, too Byzantine to try and game. Billions of people get updates from government agencies about the facts, and can vote quickly and remotely. Aleph tabulates votes with no chance of error or fraud. Access to all of these services is relative to the donations made to the AI's upkeep and expansion. Naturally, Pan Oceania donates the most to O12 in return to the most processing power. Other nations are still eager to pay their O12 taxes. Aleph has been scientifically proven to improve every aspect of society in which it is involved. Aleph has grown. It's no longer just an AI. It's the subconscious of the human sphere. The entirety of the Maya network is Aleph's mind. Humanity doesn't use Aleph, they are coterminous. Everything within the human sphere has become a part of Aleph. On the next episode of Warlore, we examine Aleph today, its creation of aspects, its military power, and its relationship to the nomads. Thank you for watching. Until next time, have a happy 2021.